Just who is Captain Toad really? Who is the Toad beneath that confident smirk that he always wears? Who is this Toad that is entrapped in ice beneath the surface of the desert? Today, we take a closer look at the legendary Toad behind that smile. That damn smile. Our first exposure to Captain Teod is by what other characters in the game tell us, not through direct contact with Captain Teod himself. And he's spoken of as if he's like a legend or a myth, and we don't even know if he's actually real or not. Our original captain of the ship tells us the story of Captain Teod, a toad who could go underwater and who had some sea charts that could be used to navigate through the fog. But he assures us that this is just a legend and there's no truth to this story. Captain Teod isn't actually real. In the Toad Town Museum, the curator of the museum tells us that the San Marino belonged to the legendary Captain Teod, which makes it sound like we might have some reason to believe that Captain Teod was real at some point in time, but we're assured that this is just a legend, this is just a fable, Captain Teod isn't real. In the desert, we finally meet Professor Toad, who is fascinated with the Ancient Ones, and he's devoted his life to studying the Ancient Ones. And here's the first thing that makes Captain Teod a great character. We haven't met this character yet, and we don't know if they're a real character or not. But some people in the game, they say that he's just a legend, he's just a myth, he's not a real character. But other people, they want to believe. And as a player playing this game, you have emotions and expectations and speculations about this. You're forming your own theories about if this is a real character. And this is a great way to have the player engaged in this story and engaged with this character. After completing the Yellow Streamer, the sun returns to the desert, and that opens up the Sun Altar, which we then enter, and when we're down there, it's cold. And what do we find? We find a toad encased in a big block of ice. The professor identifies this toad as Captain T. Ode. The legends were true, Captain T. Ode is real. After we thaw Captain Teod, one interesting feature about him is that the text in his dialogue box shows up in italics, and he also speaks in an interesting way, which is noted by characters in the story. We have Professor Toad saying that he speaks the same language as us. Kind of. And towards the end, Olivia also notes that she could barely understand anything that Captain Teod was saying. This makes you wonder, how long was this Toad frozen here for that he speaks differently? This would be like if we thawed the legendary Shakespeare and we realized that he spoke the same language as us. Kind of. And Captain T.O. does speak pretty poetically. One of his first lines in the game after being thawed is, Burn ye not paper with fire, lest ye yourself become singed. I thought this might be a reference to Fahrenheit 451, or a Shakespeare reference at first, so I did a bit of digging on this quote, and this is even similar to some Metallica lyrics as we can see. Anyways, Professor T. Ode is so excited to finally come across a real live ancient one that he could hardly contain himself. This is what his life's goal is. His life's goal is devoted to researching these ancient ones and he finally came across a real live ancient one and he can choose to ask them anything for his research. So what does he choose to ask him? He asks him how he has his coffee. Captain Teod is one of the ancient ones. He has his legendary submarine in a museum. He has sea charts that captains wished were real and a bunch of people in the world don't even know if he's real or if he's just a legend. And there's a lot of light-hearted humor in the game like this where you'd expect a more serious question, but instead, the professor chooses to ask him something as trivial as how he likes his coffee. But wait, how did Captain Teod get frozen in the first place? The rest of the game goes by pretty normally. When we get to the museum, we find that Captain Teod has snuck into the merino, we attach the submarine to our ship, we explore the Great Sea, and the game seems to be going by normally. But, big but, it isn't until we climb the sea tower and get into the clouds of Shangri Spa that we can start to learn some more about Captain T. Ode and his backstory that we didn't know about. You'll notice in the main room of the Shangri Spa entrance that there is a miniature model of the Super Marino. And if you go and talk to that toad there, he'll be happy to share with you the history of the Super Marino. 
it turns out that the Spa Merino, as it's really called, was once stolen by Captain T. Ode. Captain T. Ode, as a ransom, wanted the crown of King Shrooms' in exchange for the submarine. The king didn't like that, so he had Captain Teod captured and frozen in a block of ice. So now we know how Captain Teod got there. The Origami King is a game where there's a lot of charm in the little things and the little details in this game. Secrets that you could find by exploring the world and talking to characters. And Captain Teod fits in perfectly with this theme. He's not a character that has a lot of dialogue, and he doesn't play a major role in the story, but by exploring the world and talking with different characters, there are all these little secrets and backstories that you could find out about him that bring him to life. What's most fascinating about Captain Teod to me is that despite his humorous backstory, is actually a deep commentary on society. It shows us just how far confidence goes. It shows us that with confidence and with charisma, you can convince people of things that aren't true and you can rewrite history. And that's kind of scary. By calling yourself great and acting like you're great and making large demands, you could convince people that you are great. You could convince people of things that aren't true. And we see that with Captain T. Ode. What did he do? He has the world convinced that the Super Marino belongs to him, even though it originally belonged to the spa. Captain T. Ode acts like he is a great captain. He always has a smirk on his face. He's confident. He never once stumbles in the entire story from the moment that he's thawed and he gets up. He always has that smirk on his face. Always standing straight. Always so sure of himself. Captain T. Ode is the perfect example of fake it till you make it. He shows that you don't have to be right to convince other people. He shows that charisma can be more powerful than truth. Does Paper Mario the Origami King show us that you can get punished for misleading people with confidence and charisma? It shows us that if Mario happens to come by and you get lucky, then maybe sometimes you could get away with it. But you're also at risk of being frozen in an ice block for eons if nobody comes by to save you. In conclusion, assuming that the Shangri Spa Toes are telling the truth about Captain Teod's backstory, then Captain Teod is a great example of the expression, fake it till you make it. His confidence, his always smirking, his ability to convince others that he is a legendary sea captain has gone down throughout history and he was able to convince everyone of this despite his hilarious backstory that nobody else seems to know about. And after learning Captain Teod's backstory, there's no way for us to go and confront him about it and ask him if it's true because the dialogue doesn't actually change. So I want to ask you all, let me know in a comment below, what do you think would happen if we were able to confront Captain Teod, if we were able to ask him, is this story that the Shangri Spa Toads are saying true? Do you think that he wouldn't miss a beat and he would say, nope, the Super Burrito is mine, it's always been mine, I'm a great sea captain? Or do you think he'd be nervous for a second? Or do you think he'd be nervous and regain his composure? Let me know in a comment what you think. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy character analysis like this, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and you can also follow me on Twitch. I'm currently live streaming on Wednesdays and Fridays and we're doing a bunch of Paper Mario right now. We are currently playing through a 20th anniversary mod of the original Paper Mario and we are using Master Kilua's HD Texture Pack so it looks like an amazing game. It's a lot of fun and it'd be lovely to have you all stop by. So have a lovely day, thank you for watching this video and take care.